Hey everyone, this lesson is on Wernicke's encephalopathy. So in this lesson we're going to talk about what this condition is, why it happens, and how we can actually make the diagnosis and treat it. So Wernicke's encephalopathy is an acute and reversible encephalopathy due to a deficiency of vitamin B1 or thiamine. So that is critically important to remember. It is acute, it's often reversible, and it's due to a deficiency of thiamine. This occurs in patients with poor nutritional absorption, intake, or loss. So a variety of patients can uh, have this condition. The most common one you're probably going to come across is chronic alcoholism. So individuals who drink a lot oftentimes don't have proper intake of uh, vitamin B1 and also have poor absorption of vitamin B1 as well. However, you can also have this condition in other eating disorders like anorexia nervosa, hyperemesis of pregnancy, prolonged fasting or starvation, GI surgery, systemic malignancy, transplantation, hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis, and also can occur in patients with AIDS. Now, there is a triad of symptoms for Wernicke's encephalopathy, and it can be remembered by the mnemonic CAN. So you can think of a can of beer, for instance, uh, with this condition. So a can of beer, so C-A-N. C for confusion, A for ataxia, and N for nystagmus. So this is the triad of symptoms, and we're going to delve a bit more into each one of these in the next slide. So again, think of the mnemonic can, can of beer. So the first one is confusion, and this is actually the encephalopathy part of it. It oftentimes presents as a profound disorientation and indifference and inattentiveness, so patients just don't seem to be quite there. The next one is A for ataxia, and this is ataxia of gait. So stance and gait are going to be affected. This is also due to polyneuropathy, so they may have some issues with sensation in their feet. There's also going to be cerebellar involvement, and when you do see a patient with this, you're going to see them have a wide base gait that has slow and short space steps just because they feel wobbly on their feet. And N is for nystagmus, but it really entails a larger group of oculomotor dysfunction. So nystagmus is the most common, but there also can be lateral rectus palsy, which is usually bilateral. You may see conjugate gaze palsies, lesions, generally of cranial nerve 3, 4, and 6. So when you do get a patient to follow your finger um, with just their eyes to assess eye movements, you're going to pick up on some of these issues. You're also going to see sluggish pupils, and you're also going to see um, possibly a nasochoria, which is just unequal pupil sizes, as you can see in this image. And there are other issues with Wernicke's encephalopathy. This can lead to a coma in some cases. You also could see hypotension, so a reduced blood pressure, and hypothermia may be an issue as well. Now, why does this all happen? What is the pathophysiology in this condition? Well, it all has to do with, again, thiamine. And thiamine is required for several different enzymes in metabolic pathways. One of them is transketolase. Another one is alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. And another one is pyruvate dehydrogenase. So these are extremely important enzymes. Um, and this is going to lead to issues in energy metabolism if you don't have thiamine as a cofactor with these enzymes. So this is the reason why we get these symptoms. Now the treatment of Wernicke's encephalopathy is basically just to replace the thiamine. So we actually give high doses of IV thiamine and we can do it um, higher amounts in the first couple of days and lower amounts later. And a key important point to note is that you do not administer glucose before thiamine which um, if you do do this, it can actually worsen the warning case of cephalopathy. So there is a time when you will give glucose, but it would be after giving thymine. And this also leads um, to more evidence that it is a metabolic issue within the brain. So if you were to give glucose before thymine, it actually worsens the condition because we don't have proper usage and proper... Um, Act, action of those enzymes we mentioned earlier, transketolase, alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, and pyruvate dehydrogenase. So again, always give thiamine before glucose, never, the, never give glucose before thiamine. And what are some of the consequences of having Wernicke's encephalopathy? 
Well, the biggest one is the development of Korsakoff syndrome, which is a chronic condition that is a consequence of Wernicke's encephalopathy. And Korsakoff syndrome is oftentimes irreversible and will present with confabulation and other memory issues along with other issues as well. So we're going to talk about this uh, Korsakoff syndrome in another lesson. Please check out um, that lesson as well for more information. And if you also want to learn more about other uh, can, medical conditions, please check out my other lessons as well. If you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to stay up to date for future lessons. And thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.